Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming. Today we're talking about Season 5 for Diablo 4, which is just a couple days away. Specifically though, we want to give an overview of what to expect going into the season for class power. With the rebalancing in the PTR and now post-PTR going into the season, things have changed quite a bit. There's a lot of questions right now, like if they've over-nerfed Barbarian or maybe under-boosted it with that new stat scaling mechanic. Or the very sudden and unexpected change to the now less than awesome looking new Unique, Crown of Lucian, which looked to be one of the strongest new items. And with this new change they sneaked into the patch notes, it's looking significantly weaker. So all of that is to say, this is fluid. Don't take it for a fact. Whatever class might look strong or weak right now, the devs are clearly still changing things. However, it's still useful to look at how things appear to stand and then give some insight into why. So what looks to be the best class in season five? We're gonna try qualify that as best we can. That means for the initial launch of the season, what's gonna be strongest soonest? Who's gonna have the best worst time leveling. What are the general best builds, so say pit pushing or the new endgame mechanic, Infernal Hordes. So with those qualifiers, let's start with the easy one, leveling. This feels pretty straightforward because it's been a consistent theme throughout the last few seasons. The best levelers are still Necromancer and then Sorcerer and even Rogue. Despite the fact that Barbs are certainly up there now, the true reality of what the best levelers are has become blurred over the last couple seasons. Before it took days to reach level 100 even for the speedrunners and last season it took them like 10 hours or less. Before you'd see a dedicated group to push as fast as possible, a group of Sorcerers, groups of Necromancers. Last season the top group was a necromancer, a sorcerer, a rogue, and a barbarian. So it's just not as clear cut anymore. That's because it's so much faster that the value of the race isn't remotely as high, the differences are a lot lower, and so mixed groups actually work great for the utility. Having said that, I still rate necromancer the highest personally. That's because, say, Blood Surge requires nothing to instantly destroy thanks to the guaranteed overpower mechanics and even resource gen via the skill tree alone. Everyone else has to collect the right aspects from the codex at least to get going, and then whenever an else is going with their aspects, you know, the Necromancer can swap to their proper build with the aspects ready at the same time. So Necromancer's raw instant power for leveling has been the case this whole time. It's a big part of why they won the first three seasons for leveling when it actually mattered. It's also only better this season because we finally have some ability aspects to run and a variety of them where say you're running Blood Mist or you're sticking with minions, there was good picks for both. But behind that, I put Sorcerer and then Rogue, which are both top performers in leveling just because of the utility and movement. Both could destroy enemies in single target or packs and then they have the highest mobility in the game which is obviously a big selling point for leveling. Neither are going to have a problem in season 5 that's for sure with multiple top tier build options to consider this time around and hell even barbarians looking great especially after season 4 helped them get going sooner which has been a bit of a problem for that class for a while. That's nothing compared to Druids though, which still have uniques that ultimately let builds function. I still think that's never okay and should never have been a thing. A class requiring a unique actually work for its build, it should just be the class itself. So yeah, slower start for them, more so than other classes. So in quick conclusion, Necromancer, Sorcerer and Rogue are my expected top levelers. And if I had to pick one, I'd still give it to Necromancer overall, especially with the mobility aspects added in Season 5. Now, what about the end game? We're going to have two main modes you're going to want to think about for the big picture of that, that being Save the Pit and the new Infernal Hordes mechanic. Since we already have a good gauge on the pit, we'll cover that first. In the PTR, we're able to see the results of the patch and who came out on top. Obviously, things have changed since then with the Season 5 patch changing stuff, but we do have similar expectations. The top clearer in pits in the PTR look like Rogue, with incredible showings between their penetrating shot builds and the very interesting Andarial options, becoming poison resistant as much as you like, and spreading your own poison while enjoying the massive attack speed it provides. In any case, you're going to have heavy crowd control focus with Rogue. Between slows and hard stuns, you can completely prevent damage while dishing out your own. They have incredible sustain from the healing. When you look at their basic attack focused, victimized Heartseeker build, that was incredible for that and could be weaved in again. Then it's just got high DPS, burst from mob clear mobility and hard control of targets, alongside the respectable self-sustain. So it's been shockingly good, especially in the PTR, and any build or any class that's going to make the most the Ring of Starless Skies is going to be a serious contender, and I think Rogue is the perfect example of just that. Under that, we had the saving grace of Necromancer for Season 5, which is Bone Spirit. Personally, as a Necromancer main, I am interested to see how this is going to work and perform early season. Even though this obviously kicks butt at the highest level, it's also one of the most gear dependent builds that Necromancer has. You must reach all of the stat requirements to ensure your bone spirit actually hits like a truck, killing anything it touches. This then resets the cooldown, refunds the cost, and in general, you're gonna need enough generation of those resources to maintain high DPS. 
There's no doubt that it's going to instantly be bursty, but it's the consistency of that burst that has me concerned, especially in the early days of the season when we're building up the gear. The big question for Necromancers is not what build is best, but how fast can we reach that functional state for Bone Spirit? Or will it be a trap to use too soon before you've got the right gear? So while they were second in the pit clears in PTR, you've got to keep that in mind. Under those two then, it was fairly balanced between the other three classes. Druid doing great with its new landslide options, or the classic Windshear setup still doing good, where you're basically playing a ranged druid let you avoid the damage by pumping it out at a safe distance. There was great showings for Sorcerer from a bunch of builds. Frozen Orb, Ball Lightning, there's actually some hope and hype for Chain Lightning too, but the consistent fantastic option, even back in Season 4, let alone PTR, has been Blizzard Sorcerer, and so we are expecting the same in Season 5. Finally, also around the same level of clears, was Barbarian. Between its bleed-focused flay build, or the beloved Bash Barb, Barbarian just hits hard and has so much built-in survivability, it's kind of made for pit pushing. So in short, Rogue was the top of the PTR for pit pushing, with Bone Spirit Necromancer specifically just behind, but I think Rogue in general will be more functional sooner than Bone Spirit, that is for sure. Under that, the other three classes were competing surprisingly close overall. All right, so the other end of the end game is certainly the new Infernal Hordes, which, if you aren't aware, is our new end game mechanic in Season 5. Essentially, you'll be fighting waves of enemies in one location, and after each wave, you get to choose three options. Each option will offer you a boon, but also a bane at the same time. So something you're definitely going to want, but something to make the next waves, and so on, harder, and that's going to stack up. Make it through all those waves though, and then you'll need to defeat the multi-boss fight at the end, the Fell Council, to enjoy the reward. It's going to be a good way to get gear, especially with how you'll find it's a top source for consistent, greater affix drops, very excitingly. Now with that in mind, we've got wave clearing and then multiple bosses to fight at once, which are going to be weak individually compared to, say, one single big bad. Therefore, it's fair to assume that mob clear builds are going to be king of that content. And with that in mind, there's Whirlwind Barb to consider, the Dust Devil version 2 that's got the highest potential to kill everything on screen super quickly. It should be destroying the mob clear, and yet main good DPS in the boss fight because there's going to be multiple weaker bosses than average to actually generate from. Whirlwind Barb is actually looking good in the new season 2, like they planned this. But under that, it's a lot harder to say. Rogue is going to have insane mob clear, control, that's definitely going to be amazing. Sorcerer is just built in AoE between all of its top builds, especially Blizzard. And then Druid has Landslide, it's a great option too. Meanwhile, Necromancer is a one-hit wonder, at least that's what it appears in Season 5 in regards to Bone Spirit. That question comes up again. How will Bone Spirit fare before you've got all that maxed out gear in the right setup? It's a button that consumes all your essence to smash in a smaller AoE compared to other builds. So, the new Bone Prison and how that's going to help with the radius of the AoE per cast, that's going to be really important. How will it compete in those early days Really? So this category is definitely the most up in the air, but I do think Barbarian's got a standout build to consider for it, with Rogue and Sorcerer being able to dominate in any case, with high potential between them. But that brings me to the speculation conclusion for this topic. What will be the best class overall in the opening section of Season 5? We think it's a hard line to draw, since it's looking like an amazing season actually for Rogue, and Sorcerer. With Rogue having absolutely insane build potential between Penetrating Shot, Rapid Fire, Heartseeker and the new potential of Andarials too, it's got a lot of really potent options. Then Sorcerer does too. Blizzard obviously, but also Chain Lightning when you have the insane gear required for that. There's still Frozen Orb and Ball Lightning and so on. Both of these classes have the power potential, but also this variety of meta competitive options too. And both of them are already top contenders for the leveling experience. So, that's my cop-out. I'm not going to say that one class looks the best. I'm going to say that it's between Rogue and Sorcerer, based on what we know and have seen. I hope that gives you some insight into what we're expecting and was useful overall. Obviously, things may turn out different, but that's the consensus for now. So, for now, thank you for watching. I'll see you in Season 5. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye